Repeat after me. Funds are safe. Thank you, CZ, for the wise words. Let's take a look at the charts today. In particular, Bitcoin, which we have covered many, many times on the channel. But we have a lot of indicators that show us this is not the end. No need to stress out. No need to panic in the comments section saying this is a scam. That's a scam. If you've never traded before and you see a red day for one day or one hour or a couple of days, you really need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Listen to CZ. Funds are safe. This takes patience. It takes guts. You've got to understand what it is that you are doing. One day in the red is not going to kill anyone. All right. It's just more buying opportunities. However, there is the possibility, always there's the possibility that it's the end. But what I want to look at today is looking at the reasons why this isn't the end, but potentially a stronger correction than what we have come to believe and what we've expected, especially when you got a lot of influencers calling for a $70,000 Bitcoin or an $80,000 Bitcoin in the short term. So if you love the sound of that, you want to subscribe to the channel, hit me down below, subscribe button is here, bell notification icon, like the video up if you find some value from it, easiest, freest way to support the channel and our mission on helping people understand that their funds are safe and helping them save their funds at the other end. Let's take a look at some of the news and then look at the charts. Coin market cap shows us the market cap of the total cryptocurrency space is 1.9 trillion. Yesterday we were hitting two trillion dollar market cap, and maybe that's some sort of psychological level for the masses out there. However, I see it more on the Bitcoin chart that we were running out of steam. I was talking about about that for the last couple of weeks. There are plenty of videos on my channel to show that, and in particular, we're going to recap the areas on the chart that we were specifically looking at. So Bitcoin is still trading over a trillion dollar market cap. Ethereum still up here at 229 billion. It's dropped under 2000 US dollars. Don't worry, it's a number at this point. We have traded over it. We've traded at 2100. I think it's just a matter of time now before Ethereum really gets a move on. With that said, people get very frustrated that this isn't booming. I ask you, have you got your full position of whatever cryptocurrency it is, in this case, Ethereum, do you have your full position ready for that takeoff? I like that things move up slowly. It gives us a steadier pace to take off. If we just shoot straight up, which a lot of people are used to, they come here, they want gains in a day or in two days or in an hour, and then they don't get it. They sell off, move to something else because that was moving. I'm not really interested in that game. If you are, I'm sure there are plenty of people that can lose you money going from one crypto to another to another. Patience, you're buying and holding at the right times, then you can still easily get your 10 or 20x. Think of Ethereum last year, 2020, $90, $100, $150. Now it's $1,990. It's big gains if you're patient. And 10x is, you, you don't get those every day if you're trading in anything else, stock market, real estate. Businesses, you've got to come up with a lot of work and a lot of great ideas and you've got to do it yourself. This is the easy gains here. You just got to be patient. Binance slipped under 400 again, but the breakout was around 310, $310. So that still looks good. Ripple, like we talked about in last night's video, which I recorded before I saw this drop past a dollar. Uh, the news was good for Ripple, but it wasn't fantastic and it wasn't bad. So the push went up and Ripple's fallen back down. Sorry guys, XRP. Same, same if you talk to the SEC. Uh, Cardano, ADA, still sitting at that dollar twenty. So we've had a little bit of a comeback from a slight drop. So it's still accumulating above a dollar, which is good signs. Polkadot, uh, above $40. We were around 42 or 43, dropped under. We're still sitting back at $40. Uniswap, $29, $30. Litecoin, Maybe it'll see it's a day in the sun at some point, but it's still sitting above the $200 accumulating. Chainlink had the good news that we saw yesterday from Grayscale. I'm going through the top 20 or so here because the news is still relatively good and the conditions haven't changed that much. We're just waiting for some more volume to come back in. Remember, we've gone from a $20,000 Bitcoin. If you weren't here in December of 2020, we've gone from around a 15, 18, $20,000 Bitcoin to a 62,000, now currently sitting at 56,000. So we've tripled that Bitcoin price 
and it needs some time for more volume to come back into the market, which is why I've been looking at the small double top at around 60,000 for it to come back down to somewhere around 50 to 55,000. We hit 55,000 over the last 12 hours or so, so target one reached. I'm only looking at these as an area to understand what the market is doing. Twitter, I've asked you guys this morning, are you going to buy the dip, BTFD or dump it? Most people, 87% look like they're buying the dip. So this is uh, what just a couple of hours ago. It's 11.20 a.m., 7.20ish a.m., so four hours ago. You guys are getting into it. Got your comments there. Thank you very much. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. I'll do some Q&A after this on Instagram. The Google Trends. Red is crypto, blue is Ethereum. Ethereum has been going up over the last couple of days, uh, just dropped off recently, and crypto is on its way back up again, surprisingly, even through the, this bit of a dip. So Ethereum, crypto, there's still search volumes going on. Now to a quick bit of news, Decrypt. Uh, we've got here Jamie Dimon back telling us that there's serious emerging issues when it comes to Bitcoin, Diamond said. So Diamond said serious emerging issues. Banking boss uh, also re reiterated the threat of fintech and further down an example. Uh, so basically he's just saying that he believes that we're going to need a lot of legal regulatory status uh, within cryptocurrencies and that fintech is coming out and there needs to be some more guidelines around everything. We need to stop it all. We've seen Jamie Dimon talk about this stuff before. He says one thing and then does another. Whether this is just the articles really wanting to hate on him, that's another narrative, another theory that I have as well because crypto loves to hate someone so they have their villains. Jamie Dimon is a villain of crypto and people who are writing these articles can say whatever the hell they want and without really understanding the background. There we go. Moving on. Uh, example of the SEC which claims authority over most Ethereum based tokens. So this is something that Diamond's talking about. You've got the SEC which controls Ethereum. Then you've got the CFTC which goes after Bitcoin related stuff like futures and options. So there's a lot of different governing bodies doing different things in the crypto space. So essentially what we're looking at here is the, the, when the narrative shifts, it will at some point, maybe in six months time, maybe even now just to give us a bit of a hit down so that people can come back in and buy up. Then the, the narrative I think will be that there is regulation coming. I think that's an easy one for a lot of people to get scared about because they've started conditioning us already. Narrative is regulation. That'll come. Rich Dad, Poor Dad author says Bitcoin to hit 1.2 million. I think I, I really love Robert Kiyosaki, uh, but I think he sort of loses the plot a little bit. This, he was the main one that I got into investing when I was 19. I read the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. I love the investor quadrant. That's why I wanted to be an investor. Uh, but he kind of just goes off on these big long tangents that the world is coming to an end. Probably right in, say, a few decades. So he's preparing now. So that's probably right. But if you think it's going to happen next year or in the next six months, people are going to be lost, completely lost, especially with the property markets crashing and the stock markets crashing. Absolute nonsense. This stuff is going up for a few years yet. Let's call it five years or so, three to six years, somewhere in that ballpark. I've done videos on it before with economists. All right. Trend has shifted. All right, you already see the narrative moving here. We've got the news media talking about narrative shifting. You can see multiple different points on this chart saying this is a support level, this is a support level, this is a support level. It's pretty much picking up every $1,000. Uh, but this is uh, from independent on-chain analyst Willy Woo on Twitter. You guys might know about him. Looking at the wallet flows, 54000 is the strongest area of BTC price discovery by long-term investors since 11,000. Typically, BTC forms a strong base of price discovery two to three times above the price cycle, all-time high before launching into bull market highs. This phase is almost complete. So we're about that two to three times above the all-time high. Now we're consolidating before we launch into some massive highs. I think we still have a little bit of time for this consolidation, whether it's a few days or it's a couple of weeks, maybe a little longer, somewhere in that period. But it's very short-term compared to where we are heading. All right, 2% inflation is a myth. I'm talking about inflation here, looking at this because money printing, this is still going on. Uh, another few trillion dollars to come into the US economy. Stimulus, another three trillion like we've got here. Federals, reserves, books, numerous status quo economists, look at the wording they're using here, and mainstream media publications claim inflation in the US at most a mere 2 to 2.24%. So all of the mainstream stuff is trying to tell us what the government is telling us. 
most other people think it's, well, I wouldn't say most, I'd say the other side of the equation, the other economists, probably looking upwards of five, six, seven, ten percent. Some of them even go on about 20% inflation. But let's just look at it in that region that it's at least double or triple what the government's actually telling us. It's quite obvious that US citizens are not being told the truth about the expanding money supply, where it's all going, and the real inflation rate. This is just showing the increase in commodities, uh, looking at oil, corn, steel, wheat, coffee, cotton. These are all the big major commodities which are traded on the markets. Uh, soybeans, copper, I've got those lumber for our homes, home values, and the stock market. So everything is going up a hell of a lot. But we are in a bull market as well. So these, these things tend to rise really fast and then correct just as hard uh, at some point, which I believe is in a few years time from here. CEO, our God, I don't really want to call that, but <laughs> our good friend Chang Peng Zhao, CZ, CEO of biggest crypto exchange, has close to 100% of his net worth in crypto. He, uh, he values liquidity much more than owning something. I actually prefer not to own anything. Now, this is part of your asset protection. If you don't own anything, you don't have any assets that people can come and sue you for or try to take from you or pin you into some sort of corner to get something from you. So owning, no yeah, owning nothing is a form of asset protection. Think about that and the ways that you can incorporate that into your own asset wealth plans. Binance CEO has previously claimed that he does not hold any fiat currencies. I hold zero fiat, basically just uses fiat to buy stuff that he needs to. Really important. I know we're not into Bitcoin, but this is part of the asset protection. As the market rises and you've got some wealth, what are you going to do with it? Think about these things. Really think about it. Don't just keep skipping from altcoin to altcoin. Go and pay your 40% taxes or 50% taxes or whatever taxes you're paying. Think about these things. Really important. Last thing, these are cryptos which I wouldn't say are flying under the radar, but these have a very strong ecosystem. And I say this now because we have a dip. These could be some good ones to have a look at not financial advice, no buying signals here, but the FTX ecosystem. FTX, uh, Solana isn't part of FTX, but they do work very well together. Solana, uh, Serum, and Radium. So all of these sorts of things are working within that Solana um, ecosystem. And FTX has, I believe the CEO here, Sam, likes that space as well. So I'm gonna look a lot more into that and talk about it on the channel coming up. I thought I would just mention this. FTX is making deals with Miami Heat to call their stadium, I believe it's FTX Arena. So big stuff here. Last thing, Signal. Signal app uses this coin, mobile coin, on the Stellar network. Again, you can trade this on FTX exchange. So I just saw this pop up as well. Basically cryptocurrency coming into our apps, apps that we use a lot of, of course, Signal is a big one. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Finally, this is the chart here. This is what we looked at in the previous video. We were looking at areas of basically resistance or support when the market tends to shoot up. So these are all 50% areas when we use our FIB levels. I'll leave a link to this at the end of this video. So stick around till the end of the video. There'll be a link that you can just click on and start watching this video. Essentially, I look at using major lows to major highs with the FIB, uh, FIB extension tool and we just look for the 50 fib retracement my apologies fib retracement and we just look for areas of support 50 percent of support here was at around two thousand dollars hit it good volume moved away again all those green areas are 50 percent supports on the way up and then eventually it fails at one one point it has to fail because the trend changes and then we get all of the 50 percent working the other way this is a fantastic tool to use now we have these areas of weekly support and resistance and these circles here this basically shows a weekly chart a swing chart so we have to add in the swings ourselves but this failed once here and then reclaimed the area and it was another entry point then the weekly came up again failed the weekly swing low but it closed high on mega mega volume and went off again so the weekly chart had failed but it very quickly came back and I'm expecting for a weekly break now, because I don't believe we've seen one just yet, but I'm expecting a weekly break and then a quick recovery and then away we go again. This orange line works on a log scale as it was 
resistance. We've got a couple of resistance point here, resistance point here, broke above, came back underneath, broke above, increased volume, and then that was the end of the bull market. You had about two months left in the bull market, or at least for the Bitcoin price. So that's why I like these log uh, resistance levels on the way up. And currently we are not above that. You see this, it came up, broke down, and away we go again. These are good areas of uh, entries and exits as well. So keep that in mind. Let's move across to our current area. And this is what I'm looking at here. This is the current log support resistance that I'm watching. It's not, uh, it's basically it doesn't have to be that exact one just yet because we're still watching the, the market to see what's going on. Uh, but I've taken off all the lines, basically connecting this major high to these major high points. We haven't reached it for a third time in this move, but we do have one data point, two and three. So that's a good start. Now, this is, these are the swing lows. You can see how the, the low breaks down from the previous week. One, you've got another break here, another break here, another break here. So we have not broken a swing, uh, a swing low or a weekly low in this bull market since back here in August, all right? This generally happens once or twice in a bull market and that's what I'm waiting for. That's why I believe we will break down past this $50,000 level and we're still in a bull market. I think we'll get a little break of it here. If we don't, I suspect we will see one in the bull market at some point, but I would like to see it here earlier rather than later. I don't wanna see them later in the market because it just gets a little bit com more complicated, but if we see it earlier on, great. And I have a feeling we may see it here because the volume has died out. And that's what I was concerned with as the market rose again. I'm like, what the hell's going on when there is no volume? Like who is buying this thing? And I suspected it was a lot of retail buying at these levels. It just didn't support the price. And until we get some stronger volume come in, uh, I think we won't see any move higher. That's just the way it works. You need to have volume to move things. You need to have energy in, in, in the car. You need to have fuel. You've got to have gas in the tank to move the market. Currently, I don't see the gas in the tank. You tell me if you see it. I'm looking at Bitstamp. Maybe you see it somewhere else, but I definitely don't see the gas in the tank at the moment. So that's why I think maybe we get a drop down here. Now, let me, let me zoom in. I'll put it on a two-day bar chart. This is what we we're looking at. You know that we've been looking at it on the charts for several uh, days now. This is a two day, so two, four, six, eight, ten. You know, coming up to two weeks thereabouts. The little double top here, the levels probable. I think we're probably going to see something around these levels here. They've got some highs, some lows, something around that fifty-two thousand, and I'm still happy. Flash. If we got this flash crash, I'm going all the way down to the bottom here, at, down to forty thousand. I still think we're okay. We know the twenty week moving average is at around around forty thousand dollars so if i bring it back to a weekly chart there's the 20 week 20 week is at forty thousand three hundred, and that's continuing to rise as well so you know by the time we get there maybe we'll be at forty one thousand, maybe we'll be forty two thousand. so we've still got support down there could be a flash crash it's a nice move uh, for our fibs as well this is 200% of our double top, which we know can happen. It's a 38% support of our FIB range. It has, uh, it breaks through the low, touches the high. It's, it's all looking good to me. We just wanna see big volume come in when it does do that. Breaks that low, tests it, pushes out the weak hands, comes back up, great stuff. That's, I'm just preparing for these things. I'm not saying they have to happen. It's just preparation in case it does happen because that's gonna be massive. And I talked about it on some other videos and people, and someone rightly said, if that happens, everything else will really crap itself. And sure enough, it, it will. But I don't think it will last too long, just like we saw in 2017. It was only a couple of weeks. So be prepared for that. Don't think about an hourly, you know, an hour from here or there. Just think about these sorts of things. This can be invalidated by a break and a close above the 60,500-ish level. So we get a break above and a close, that's looking good. Two or three days above that, looking very good. Okay, so this this invalidates this. Solid support here at our 61%. So this is our major fib, 61%, 125% of this double top. So it's extending range, no problems. Okay, that brings us somewhere about 13%. No big deal. 14% if you want to call it that. And then a possible is testing this low here on our 50%. You know we're looking at that at around that $45,000 level. So that's about 20%. So it sounds like massive numbers for a lot of people, but really, look, we've gone up 
a thousand percent, something crazy. All right, we've gone up from three thousand to sixty thousand, massive, more than a thousand percent. You know, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred percent. So I'm not too concerned overall with these support levels and where we might see them. This was the point of the videos to just demonstrate that there can be some times where the market will drop significant amounts. I see a lot of support levels at 45 to 50,000. I think we will see a breakdown of a weekly low. All right, that has to happen at some point. I mean, nothing has to happen, but I've seen it time and time again. It generally does that and breaks back above. So these are the sort of things that I'm looking for that I can be prepared for and not be too scared. <laughs> too scared, not be too scared when the market does show those signs. So there are my levels. We'll c come back to this in future videos. Thank you very much for stopping by on yet another crash video. Uh, big stuff coming, that's the way I see it. It just needs to wind up again because there is no volume. If there's no one buying, how are we gonna move? We need people to buy in order for this price to keep moving and accumulation is a good thing. So don't worry about it, consolidate, do what we need to do, stick to your plans. If you don't have anything, write something up now while you're in this period. Don't wait until the market goes a million times higher. I'll leave it there guys. Thank you very much uh, for joining me on the channel. Subscribe, like the video if you found some value from the content. Uh, follow me on Instagram, daily q and I'm gonna jump over there for 15 minutes now. So I'm gonna do some Q&As for you guys. Uh, Twitter, like you saw, and of course, the Investor Accelerator course. Go and get a copy of that. Sorry, go and get the membership, the 12-month membership over before the price increases this weekend. I know I've said that, but you've had quite a few of you guys who have been asking for it, emailing me. So just until this weekend, that is it. All right, thank you very much. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.